Hello and a happy new year. Happy 2022, everybody. Thanks for joining in again. <clears throat> Today, I want to fly the T1 Ranger with you. Um, I've been adjusting a whole lot of stuff, like uh, all the flaws I had. I fixed the OSD. I fixed a defective GPS unit. Um, what more? Oh, I built a lithium ion pack. And currently I'm waiting for the fix, for the GPS fix. Okay guys, we are currently in a situation where I am about to reduce the points on my to-do list and one is a uh, uh, thing my flying buddy from UK called Crunkle Floop FPV came up with. He said, buddy, you gotta strengthen your tail fin because you cut out here and this is getting um, a bit soft. So he came up with the idea to say, we take uh, some kind of carbon spa like this one this is a half centimeter by, what is it, one millimeter. And we just place it here in case you bash into the bushes and um, that won't prevent you to chop off your fin and uh, destroy your foam. So this is something pretty easy. I took this, this is about 11 centimeters. You can measure it your own. And what I did is exactly to cut in here, you can see it. <clears throat> this is a fine cut. I did it with a hobby knife and I didn't uh, use the ruler. I should have perhaps, but I can tell you this is a pain in the behind if you have to do so. So yeah, try to hit that mark where the thing is um, molded. There's a little molding scar in the middle. Follow it with your hobby knife and then you can uh, push the rod in with some glue to keep it in place. So you can see the rod is fitting in perfectly. And I've done this cut into below the plastic so you can push it down below and then just get that worked in into the foam. But before you push it in, be sure, be sure to put glue in so you don't have to fill around with that anymore. Um, important though is that the spar is the first place to take the impact in case of an impact. 
branches, trees, you know, they just jump into the place and you're just stuck with them. You have to deal with those guys. Well, one thing is just to prevent your foam being ripped out. That's a carbon spore. Here's a lifesaver. Do it. Do it. Come on, you can do it. This is how it looks like. After uh, applying the Crunkle Floop FPV mod, I will call it at that officially now. <laughs> uh, you can see um, this bar is almost invisible and uh, the fin didn't do any or get any harm. Um, <clears throat> well, this will last a bit longer, I guess. And yeah, those branches can't do you. Shh. Basically, what you have is in each wing two W uh, WS twenty eight twelve LEDs. Um, these are connected as if they were one LED. Now the wires in here are going into the fuselage and ending up at the flight computer on the LEBD pin of iNav. And the wires are done in parallel. That's how Hewing has wired it up. So what you end up with is uh, in the configurator to have only one LED which you have to configure only one and this will do the job this will make your leds shine and if you look at it it's sure understandable two leds do as one each wing in parallel makes four leds two and two together to one and uh, well yeah you can see i configure it to be white white and i said blink always warnings and indicators on and, well, you have this nice effect.
fucking me, it's frozen. The ground is frozen. Have a look. It would be a horrible mess to clean that up later. So yeah, we are flying. That was nice. Still got a little mess with my GPS. As it won't fix it fast. As I would like to let it fix. So yeah, we'll have to dig in there. Um, other than that, you go tell me in the comments because you saw it up there. I was the one standing here below and trying to fly this thing smoothly. So I hope that succeeded and uh, we had fun here. Oh, they're not trashed. They are reloading. Whoa! It's freezing cold! <laughs> I'm doing the red nose reindeer! <laughs> now I'm waiting for my battery to recharge. And well, perhaps I'll get some of the sunlight up there. That would be awesome. Anyways, uh, now while I'm waiting, a friend of mine will take his 7-inch uh, quad and give it a ride with his new GoPro. Oh, that sound didn't sound good. <laughs> Maybe he won't get it right anyway. <laughs> uh, oh boy, I was blind up in the air. Now this looks more like it. I configured all four screens to my de de defaults. <clears throat> I will adjust this one. You can see, oh, I can see myself. How horrible. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyways, back to topic. You can see here, I got those um, values and not all of them are what we'll fiddle with in INA 4.0 because the auto tune will only do the FF wing, FF values, not the roll and the pitch. So only those two are of interest the P and the I and the D. So these two are interesting, the other ones not so much. And uh, well, I will make this um, accessible through the wheel I have here, which currently, of course, not works when I want to show it. Anyways, um, this one will dial me through my settings and we will see that in a minute. And this one is the one where we will change the screens. I got three screens, four screens, four screens. One, two, three, and four, yeah. <clears throat> On the fourth one, I got the settings. So, I think it's time to um, get the settings right and uh, make those values accessible. You should know me as a lazy man, so I did a copy of my adjustments from my Ripper, or the Heaving F01. <clears throat> and you can see I used channel seven on the left, um, potentiometer, the S1, so I can uh, simply slide back and forth with the settings and we can have a look what we are setting and adjusting. It's first of all the VTX power manually in case the uh, logic doesn't do right for me. <coughs> yeah, sense a lot, thanks a lot. Next one we have the roll I adjustment and the pitch P adjustment as well as pitch I and roll P and uh, finally we have the fixed wind, wind throttle pitch angle adjustment. If you look at it uh, and take over to the camera here, to the display, and then I start... Sense, sense a lot, yeah right. And I start to scroll over to the first value. Well, as you can see, I can go here for 15. Let's say that's me. It's a little too little, too little less for me, so I just raise it with channel 9, which is the three-way button. Raise and low, uh, raise them and lower them, just as I like to, and just head on to the other values which I have configured, and then we're good to go. Well, next up, we have a little issue I found, and uh, maybe you want to check yours. My ESCs didn't have the brakes set to be on, so in case you're landing and you gain speed, although the motors are off, your props would start spinning and winding up. You can prevent this by hitting the brakes in the Beale Heli S firmware, which is installed on the ESCs, and uh, so did I. That's how it looks like, basically. That's it. Yeah. <sighs> Standing, freezing, waiting. 
wrong year, the time of the year to fly. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That would be awesome.